All right. I would like to officially call to order the Tuesday, July 31st meeting of the Bolton Conservation Commission. And as always, we'll start with a roll call. I am Brian Berby. I am Jeff Bryan. Bill Payne. Kim McNamara. Rebecca Long. First up tonight, the Bolton Conservation Commission will now hold a public hearing under the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and under the Bolton Wetland Bylaw, Chapter 233, to consider a uh, to consider issuing a certificate of compliance uh, to James Morin regarding a project to improve septic located at 437 South Bolton Road. Becca, do we have an update? Yes. Um, so for this project, it was a pretty self-explanatory lot. It's down by Lively Road, where I think Lori made the comment that they were all summer camps out yes. or camps at one point. Um, so they were really limited to basically improving their septic situation. Um, it was relatively close to the resource area, but they were outside the 25 foot. This was issued. It was issued on on November 28th, 2017. Um, they have obviously completed the project because they were looking to sell the home. And the only special conditions that the commission had added in, aside from the regular boil plate, were that the area be, I'm just looking for the specific language, hydro seeded and stabilized before receiving a COC. Um, and this silt fence that was in place and hay bales because of the grading that was done in close proximity to the wetlands are still there and very well intact and they've been that way throughout the project. Um, okay, so the two special conditions where hydro seeding will include um, the tap that will hold in place, area of disturbance will be hydro seeded and stabilized upon completion, and then upon completion the conservation and or its agent shall inspect the site prior to erosion control, removal, or issuing a certificate of compliance. I was out on the site it literally looks like lawn now, just as it was before. Um, I was actually very happy. It's in compliance. There's no outstanding items. There was no um, vegetation growth monitoring period just to make sure that it was stable and it's growing. And like I said, you can barely tell that it. it was even disturbed aside from this fence. Um, so they are obviously looking to close out the order of conditions um, and the special order of conditions under the Wetlands Protection Act and the local wetland bylaw. Do you have any concerns going on the site? I don't. Are there any questions? No concerns. All right. Okay, case. I'd like to make a motion uh, that we issue the certificate of compliance for 437 South Bolton Road. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, so you have to close it. Oh, shoot. I'd like to make a motion that we close <laughs> the public hearing for 437 South Fulton Road. Anyone? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so close. We don't need to make the other motion again, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You need your button. Yeah, the easy button. Mm -hmm. All right. so you can sign up. What we are signing uh, on the back of the agenda is minutes from last week. If people want to review those quick. Thank you. 
a good time. I was good at that for a long time, and then I got really bad at it. I just before I haven't done it. I was I watching to come here. one recently. Regarding the minutes, I didn't say anything. Wrong. <clears throat> so where I got a question on, on uh, the shed. Where is the shed? No, I don't think. Really. Where is uh, that the located? Camp? The what, camp. what is it the is camp? Located at, so the Tom Denny Nature Camp. Um, they have. They have a home base area, basically, where they meet in the morning and where they collect in the afternoon, where they eat lunch and everything on the Bower Springs property. Yep. Um, it's in the wooded area, not in the fields. And currently, they have they have two or three sheds, or they have two sheds, excuse me, one of which will move, move down to the waterfront. And last week, or last week, last meeting, we were taught they had requested since they're moving that small shed down to the waterfront area seasonal um, temporarily during the camping okay. weeks or season they would like another shed at their home base area okay so that's understand what yeah if you walk the property you'll see it i'll see it. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions please? No. That is, I would like to make a motion that we approve the July 10th, 2018 meetings as drafted and submitted. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We have five minutes. Do we have any small items? Um. Oh, we had received a letter um, or a request from the athletic director at Neshoba Regional High School to use Bower Springs Conservation Area for their annual cross country meets in 2018, so this coming fall. And I believe it's two dates later in the fall. Um, and it just, I had asked just for the knowledge and to provide signage to individuals that use the property regularly to know that they're coming up versus the week before. So that's basically what it is. We, we've allowed them to use property for many years, to my understanding. Um, so I don't know if the commission is still comfortable with that. That was my other concern, um, just because we have so many new faces. Or if there is anything we'd like to suggest in terms of mowing or marking, or if they're just OK to do what they've been doing, which I think is fine. At least run through the poison ivy. <laughs> Are these like big invitational yeah. meets or are they just like a um, dual meet after school kind of thing? It's not just a dual meet, but it's not invitational. So there, there's more than one school representative to compete with them, um, but it's not like an invitational for you. Have you given you no. a date yet? No. Uh, I do. The, I brought the letter with and, and I should say quickly too, I, I am going to recuse myself from this conversation. My son's actually on the team, so I'm going to stay out of this one. <laughs> well, you should make sure you get your head started. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't have it with me, but like I said, okay. during the cross country season, fall, I have the dates in my office. So, so, so it's like two them. dates? Yes. Yeah. So, any issues, questions? 
question? No. Okay. I'm trying to think how many years they've been doing it. They've been doing yeah. it as far back as I can remember. It's always the God. It's a good <clears> thing. Run over those trails and jumping over roots and trees and that's what's good for them. That's the whole thing. Yeah. That's the whole point. Yeah. Yeah. Fun obstacle. You can go race against them if you want. Do they actually <laughs> do mean, I mean, I have no idea about cross country running, but do they do anything to try to eliminate roots and rocks and stuff, or that's just no. part of it? No, that's part of it. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that's, a, that's the challenge, yeah. Otherwise, it's for a race. Or track. Or track, yeah. You see, this is good, but I don't know that you know dropping that all up. Yeah. Now it's, it's wide enough. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not, there's no hills. No. I mean, maybe that's the point. Hmm? I said maybe that's the, the point. The point. No, I think parking is the point. That's a good idea. Okay. Do charge for parking? Mm -hmm. You don't want to make a few bucks. I can't say, I can't say anything. Um, do we have any other quick mail? Oh, we have two minutes before we can start the other one. Oh, quickly, I went to 147 Long Hill Road, which most of our new members are new. Um, so I'll resend the order of conditions that was issued a while ago. But basically, I've gone out on site. The area, the replication area, has been staked in terms of where the grades should go and where the edges of the grades will go. Um, but they, I requested that the planting be completed in spring, as it's been a few years out now, and I really don't see any excuse why it hasn't been done. Um, now it's been summer when they got it graded, so this fall they're either going to plant it or I'll come back to the commission and request that we go back and get it. This for the internet. Some smaller things to go through. Rebecca's too darn efficient. Well, we do, but I feel like. Yeah, I know, it's it's some will so. generate discussion as soon as we start. Right. All right. The Bolton Conservation Commission will now hold a public hearing under the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and under the Bolton Wetland Bylaw, Chapter 233 to consider the abbreviated notice of resource area delineation submitted by Molly Obendorf and of Stamsky and McNary Inc. regarding resources located at Lot 31 Nashway Road. Uh, do we have, how are you? Could you just introduce yourself quickly? Molly Obendorf and Stamsky and McNary. So the subject property is on Nashaway Road, it's an undeveloped plot on um, 31. Um, it was delineated by BNC Associates, uh, specifically Dave Crossman. Um, he went out there, I believe, in February and um, applied to Wetland. And then the commission, as well as Rebecca, went out with Dave Crossman, uh, I believe, on the 9th of June um, to walk the site, look at the delineation. Um, and there were I wouldn't say a few changes. There were a decent amount of changes. Um, the original wetland line was here, and we added flags that extended all the way here when the vegetation was not existent back in February. Um, it came to light with the sidewalk. Um, so that's it. Do you have any questions? Okay. Anybody here from the audience for this side have any questions regarding this? Are you looking to develop this area? We're not sure what we're doing with it yet. Just because getting delineation. So it seems like the wet, there's a lot of wet. Yeah. 
Can you introduce okay. yourself, please? I'm Cindy Jake with at 171 Calhoun. Um, and it just, we have that property that is bordering here. Uh, and we've noticed that the wetlands have increased down there compared to what it was. And isn't there a rule that you have to be 100 feet from wetlands to construct something? So it's jurisdictional to the commission within 100 feet. And actually, if you, do you mind just pointing to the 200 foot? This is right here. So yeah. that's a riverfront. So there's, there's, a river, stream. there's a riverfront area associated with this as well oh. because there's a perennial stream. So that's actually, to be general about it, that's a stricter regulatory area in terms of having a riverfront area associated with it. The bordering vegetated wetland buffer, which is 100 feet from the wetland, like you're stating, that's jurisdictional to the commission. So that's why if, so right now we're just looking at the delineation itself. But if they were proposing some sort of development, they'd have to file with us because it's within that jurisdictional area. That's not to say it's allowed or not allowed, but it's upon them to show burden of proof for why. And there's, you know, the Wetlands Protection Act and the local bylaw that distinguish what can and can't be done within that area. Um, but I'm hesitant to say, no, you can't have any building within that area because we wouldn't have basically any buildings in Bolton, whether you're grandfathered in historically or not. But this is specifically just the resource areas they're looking at. Um, they're not, at this time anyways, we haven't heard and we haven't seen any potential development. Um, and this has been a lot that's been sitting dormant for some time, obviously, which it may continue that way. It may mm -hmm. not. We don't know. We can't assume at this point. Um, but what we do know is there's wetlands on the property. The buffer all but enclosed the property, aside from a very small mm -hmm. corner over there. Little sliver here. Um, do it ten years. Yeah, not on that corner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Might be a little small, but um, and they also have to meet other regulations if they were to develop. But right now, the commission is just looking at the resource area delineation and if it's accurate, if it's not. Um, mm -hmm. So we had gone out, myself, Jeff and Brian, like Molly stated, with the wetland scientist, biologist, I'm not sure his exact titles, yeah. but um, and clarified, just as Molly stated, when it was in winter, you don't have leaf out. Some of the vegetation doesn't have any form of a stalk that's basically confirming wetland, so it's an obligate species. So when we were out there, we saw that in fact this more fleshy vegetation was in fact there. So that's why those flags were added. And that's why we have site visits to confirm those things. Yeah, because we've noticed it on our property too, where it seemed like originally there was like one stream or something, and now there's two. Yes. Um, so yeah, I didn't know what's going on. Yeah, in this area, it had a pretty defined um, channel that wasn't actually the stream itself. It was drainage, and actually, when you look at older plans, it, there's a small drainage area at the rear corner of this parcel. So that's what I imagine that's what that ditch is for. But the perennial stream, you could clearly see um, basically the bottom of it was very characteristic for a perennial stream. And in addition to that, you have the vegetated wetland along the banks of that. Somewhat answer your question, hope, hopefully. Um, and, and yes, Rebecca was kind of saying, as far as we know, there's no plans to do anything there. Um, usually with a step like this, it's before anybody does anything, they just want to talk to us and say, this is where we believe the wetlands are, where do you believe the wetlands are, and making sure that we're all on the same page before they even guess at what they might want to do, if anything. Um, so as Rebecca said, we, we went out, we actually walked the site, the flagging got changed, uh, actually kind of almost in a more favorable <coughs> way, or brought it up a little closer to the road. Um, and I honestly don't have any additional questions tonight coming out. This is a, looks exactly like what we saw in the field. He was actually marking some of the flags while we were out there. Um, I turned to the commission, if anybody has any additional questions, thoughts? It looks like what it looked like out there. Yeah. It's pretty defined on the topography out there, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Did you have any other concerns, Rebecca? I didn't. Um, actually, the wetland botanist specifically, when we were walking and basically adding in the flags, um, he we counted them out. He reminded me how many we should expect to have on the plants, and we have those flags that were necessary to add. Um, and like Brian said, it actually bumps it out a little bit versus in. Um, I have, I have no questions. Like everyone said, it's pretty defined by topography. And when you're out there and the vegetation's out and the water's flowing, you can see what's going on. Any other questions? Or? Please, uh, if you could state your name quick, sorry. Uh, Ed Cully, representing uh, Dr. Karen Harding, 5 Carol Hill Road. Um, in the town of Bolton, in order for a property to be buildable, 1.5 acres, is that correct? What's that? That would be a question for yeah. planning. Okay. I'm not positive on that. Uh, yeah, I'm not either. able to answer my question. I don't I know the exact that. number. Could you say yeah. your question again? I, I asked, in order to have a lot being buildable in the town of Bolton, must it not? Must it be 1.5 acres or greater? Yes or no? Um, I mean, this is more than one and a half acres. This property. That, that piece of property. Yeah. I'm also confused. The last time I was here, which was two weeks ago, I believe, mm -hmm. we were talking about lot 35. Now we're talking about lot 31, and yet on the town plans, it's lot zero. No, this is this has always been lot thirty one. And on the town plans on the assessor's map you mean? Yes. So the assessor's map when it I don't know if that how accurate those lot numbers are, but what it would have is a map and parcel number. Mm -hmm. And that's what it would go by. And this um, I'm not sure if the map and parcel is accurate. I've seen on the, the GIS yeah, it is lot 31. Mm -hmm. on the, so it's, it's, it's map, assessor's map 7B62, which is lot 31. If it says lot zero, um, it may be for it's specific to the purposes. development in terms of the original development that was created. So for invoicing purposes, it may be lot zero. Can I, can I add a comment? I mean, basically, we were out there trying to figure out where the wetlands were and what the boundaries were. I mean, there was no talk about building anything right now at this point. So all of those questions, if there are questions about that, probably won't come up until somebody says, hey, we're going to build a house there, or we're going to do something with it or well, something that's like that. Asking, sir. Well, that's what, what are the parameters, the regulations? Here in town. Well, there's, there's a time. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, yeah, as I said, that's all I'm saying. Is that this, is this, is not, this is not, you know, this part of the discussion is what she, right. she brought there about where the wetlands were and not about whether it's buildable. Um, because, and that's a question of somebody else and not this, yeah, yeah. Not this commission. That should be go to the building department or, yeah, or somebody like planning. that, a town planning or somebody else like that. We probably can't answer that. And even if we could, if we did answer it, it might be wrong. So we'd rather not. To say it's not, we're, we're not giving, or they're not seeking, we're not giving any permissions. You can build, you can't build, right. you can't do this. Honestly, all they're saying is we believe that this is a perennial stream right here, and this is where it is in the map, and we're either agreeing or disagreeing with where they put the perennial stream on the map. That's no it. other questions that we have. There's a zoning bylaw on the website that you can look through for uh, zoning setbacks and restrictions and lot sizes and probably all the answers to your questions. Can you name again now? Molly, what's Sam's game from Molly. Obendorf. Spell it please. O-B-E-N-D-O-R-F. And you represent who? I'm representing Kevin Donalds, the owner of the property. And you're with the surveying firm? 
Uh, surveying and engineering, yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Please, go ahead. If you could state your name first. Donna Balco, I want to know why you people do the delineations in the wintertime when you should be doing the spring when there's vegetation and you can clearly see what's there. When there's deadlines to meet, you know, we want to go out and get the delineation done. Um, the homeowner actually hired the botanist himself. Homeowner? Um, yeah, or the lot owner, property owner. Um, and went out when he was told to go out. So in some cases, it's quite obvious in the winter time. And in some cases, such as this, where the vegetation is pertinent, um, it changed. Did it just save everybody in the woods? Yeah. Well, and a lot of a lot of the time too, um, I've seen from reading the files, but also experiencing yeah. how um, how the board functions is if it is delineated in the winter and say we hadn't had a site visit and say there was a meeting requested during the winter as well, it's not unheard of that the commission would choose to continue until there can be a springtime delineation to sort of remediate that. Yeah. Any other questions? Anybody else on the commission? Well, one question. Is it possible to get a, a copy of that? Yes. yes. I mean, to take with us. Here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That was easy. That was so easy. Charge for it. No, yeah. dollar, dollar each. You're welcome. Great, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Right. Anyone else? All right. In that case, I don't really have set language, do I? It's like to make a motion to see how to So you have to close the issue. Issue. Gotcha. All right. I'd like to make a motion that we close the public hearing for Lot 31 Nashaway Road. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So close. Uh, oh, it's official? No, oh, it's. What's the O stand for? Order. Thank you. All right. I'd like to make a motion that we issue an order of resource area delineation for 31 Nashaway Road in agreement with the plans. So there are options. Oh. That the submitted and read um, is accurate and the boundaries described on the reference plans uh, and the abbreviated notes of resource area delineation are accurately drawn uh, for the following resource areas, both the border vegetated wetlands and the riverfront area, the river itself, freshwater and forest shrub wetland. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mission. If possible, Rona, would you like to come up? Sure. Yeah, Rona Bell is scheduled for a discussion. Very possible. Possible. 
uh, change in ownership of one of our town properties. Do you want to start explaining it or just Okay. Um, I helped the state buy Pine Hill yep. with the owners, and it abuts uh, the Oxbow Reservation. Okay. There were a couple of pieces. This piece is Bolton's piece of the pie. Okay. Okay. And it has come to our attention that, that uh, we are not sure that it is fully protected under the town jurisdiction. So we want clarification or to make sure that it's either given to the Conservation Commission uh, or to the selectmen so that it is, um, it is okay. And not only that, but we have now passed, or we haven't passed, Congress hasn't passed the Wild and Scenic River designation yet. But this is right there. Yeah, this is right in the middle. This is a so crucial just, piece. Just about that and we want to make sure that it's right protected. There. Whether the town wants it, whether they want to sell it to the state, or whatever, it's got to be protected permanently. And currently, when we're going through the Open Space and Recreation Plan, when it first came up, um, it was noticed, it was <coughs> under my assumption that it was part of the Bolton Flats Wildlife Management Area mm. and protected that way. It's not. Um, it's owned by the town outright. So it's basically under the Board of Selectmen's purview, which is fine. Yep. Um, but the problem or potential issue with that is um, it's not under conservation, so it's not protected under Article 97 like our other properties are. There's no conservation restriction on it, so it doesn't limit what can be done, it doesn't further protect the property, um, and it is surrounded by the wildlife management area, and now it's in areas that will have a federal designation that we would like to protect. Um, but I know originally the thought and sort of why it got put on the back burner is, well, it's surrounded by the wildlife management area, how likely it is for it to be built upon, but you just, you never know. Um, like, you know, so a cell phone or something That's like the that. other thing as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it is the most northwestern portion of Bolton, and it would be nice that that entire area were contiguously a wildlife management area mm -hmm. or under some form of protection versus the giant tower or whatever else can possibly mm -hmm. be put there. So what's the process of getting that? So the process is, the way I understand it in very minimal conversation that I had about it, where I would need to see, the commission would show interest in changing ownership in terms of having it, does it well, having it change to the, I think the best option would be changes to the commission first. And so then at least we know it's protected. So if we do pursue uh, seeking any purchase from the state, or if we seek a conservation restriction with the trust maybe, or other entity, then we know it's gonna be protected even if that other aspect doesn't happen. Um, but again, so the, the first step would be for the commission to show interest. Similarly, um, what we've done in the past, either with a letter that's voted upon, or just simply a vote that will then be recorded, both the meeting minutes, the agenda, and recorded um, the video. And then from there, I would request to be put on the Board of Selectmen's meeting agenda to discuss it with the Board of Selectmen themselves, see their level of interest, um, and hopefully at that point have it approved. Um, but again, the one thing that seems to come up is, well, it's surrounded, so why, but then I, sort of have the same thought process coming back is why not because it's already protected mm -hmm. um, we've seen several properties in town that said oh nothing it's surrounded nothing yeah. can happen to it and by god the next day it's being developed so yeah. this just came to my attention and with all the other work that we've done i just want to make sure that this is 
Yeah. yeah. And my understanding <coughs> might be that the town actually already owns it. Yes, it was it, taken it's for just not taxes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Quite a few years ago. So I and I assume that that was all said and done, but because we've been doing the work on the Wild and Scenic River designation, this has come forward that it's not fully yeah. protected. So we said, yeah, okay, we're going to do something. I can't, I can't imagine. I can't imagine, but I, I couldn't imagine why the selectmen would want to manage properties in town. <laughs> like, wouldn't they just want us to do it with all the other properties in town we manage? It's a question for them. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, just hearing this now and understanding what's going on, I have no issue with it at all whatsoever. It seems to make a lot of sense to me. Yeah. But are there questions here? Concerns? No, it's not. <laughs> Any comments from you guys? Um, it would not be, but it would be probably a roll call vote to request from the board of select, request that the board of selectmen mm -hmm. consider turning the property at, I don't know, we have, I would, I would have to get the yeah. parcel number, so if I may The property yes. in question this evening, right. <laughs> the property we have um, discussed. So we should start the process. Yeah, I don't think if, yeah. it, if it came to it, um, we could buy it as a, as a yeah. last resort. Yeah. I, yeah. I would like both of them something the state. Yeah. And the state. Uh, the state. Yeah. Yeah. It, it brings up just an interesting question on, on a different is it possible for the town to own a piece of land and us to have the conservation restriction on that? To my understanding, no. See, I always thought that was a no, but that makes it interesting with this question. So how, no, we wouldn't be able to. And the reason why is because the Conservation Commission is, it how how it's written in the deed is the town of Bolton acting as, or acting of the Conservation Commission. So yeah. the commission is in fact the town. Yeah. It's just providing further protection under articles that are specific to conservation versus just other municipal town yep. land that doesn't have that same level of protection that's conservation focused. I don't know. We well, it's under ACEC too. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the other thing yeah. as well. Um, it has but a lot of great natural hill, resources there. Uh, we yeah. had this. We worked with the state to buy all of that, and it is. They're turning it into a grassland, and it is the second grassland and the largest one in the state when they're through. And it's going to be fabulous. It had been all mined for sand, and uh, they went down too low. And development wanted to go in there, and we snuck in. Excellent. Um, so we would poll ourselves on proceeding yep. by uh, whatever agreeing. So you can to as the start, of start yeah. the process. And yes. then at the next meeting, I can have a letter drafted, um, and then you can do a formal vote, and then after that, we can request a meeting. And then I'll do some more digging on process involved with things. All right. So we can do a lovely, our favorite, the, the roll call poll, the roll poll. Um, and I'm just going to pull the commission off it one at a time. Um, and the question is, do you think we should proceed, move forward with this uh, proposal to try to get the plot in question as conservation land? So yes, move forward. Nay, don't move forward. Make sense? All right. I'll start with Kip, our newest member. Do you think we should move forward on this? A year and a? Yay. Yay. Lori? Yes. Bill? Yes. Jeff? Yes. I go yay as well. <laughs> so we're all unanimous. So I will draft a letter. I'll probably send it to you to get some okay. of the historical details okay. about what you were just talking about yeah. in terms of what it was, what it's become, right. the towns that have worked on it. Okay. We'll work on that area in general. So yeah. obviously there's a higher level of interest along with the natural resources over here. Um, and then our next meeting.
meeting was and is August 21st, if that still works for everyone. Um, and then we'll have a vote at that meeting. And then um, whenever the next first selection meeting is, I'll ask you to put on that agenda. But I know they're on their summer schedule, so I don't know if they're off of it at that time or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank, you, Rona. Thank, Thank you, Rona. Rona. That was an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> we need more of those. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, we yeah, for sure. It's a good discussion. Yeah, come back anytime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Um. Anything else we need to pass? Probably not. Uh, you got five minutes. Five minutes. Three minutes. Do we have the August seventh? He said we did say the seventh. Yes. So August, unless, yeah, actually. Seventh, we have the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So this one you have to put up till the twenty-first. So no, we can put it on. We'll yeah. try to put it on the seventh. Yeah. It's not a formal hearing. Yeah. I don't. It's just a discussion. I can have it be on August seventh. I forgot about that. Thank you. So that was no, it's minutes. close. Uh, uh, sure. um, well, I guess this is relatively quick. Did I include in your folder the quote for the discount? I think you either. Okay. So, yeah. originally, the quote we have gone in, we have one more coming in, which we can wait for if you would like, but. Um, so the Fifeshire Dam Conservation Area had some damage done to the entryway a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago at this point, to the left stone pillar, um, where it was hit at a high point and crumbled basically and ripped the sign, the iron sign clean off. And what we're looking at is to, what I had requested quotes for it is to repair the stone pillar, reattach the sign above. Um, we received one quote specific to that without the sign because they hadn't seen the iron rod sign and then the wooden sign we have off the property to make sure that it's protected um, thanks to our volunteer ministry. And so now after looking at both the iron piece that is basically inside of the stone pillars and knowing that they'll have to jackhammer out both pillars to reestablish the iron and then put the wooden sign back up. Um, it's a little bit more, which makes sense because there's a little bit more work involved. Um, so now that quote is 3,100 for the work of just the stone pillar. Um, they'll do their best to reuse as much stone as possible along with mixing in some material to make the cement or concrete that's being used a little bit more worn looking to suit the area but you can't make it perfect because it's many many years um, also the other quote so this is the formal quote we've received um, and they've said they're about three weeks out in terms of doing work repair work um, I spoke to another stonemason who, that's the quote that we're looking to receive within the next week, he had stated. And that, he had basically stated all of it needs to be um, cleaned up and repaired in terms of the cracks that are forming to make sure something like this doesn't happen in the future more easily than it did. And from that, I had sort of taken a step back because we only asked for quotes that were specific to the stone pillar. And I asked if he could provide just the stone pillar quote and then the entirety, so there'd be two separate quotes to compare. And he stated he's comfortable with doing that, but I wanted to make the commission aware of that, as I'm sure you're aware if you've seen um, the entryway there. There are cracks, it does have to be repaired. I don't know how soon the entirety of it needs to be repaired, but this may be a two-step. And I did speak with uh, that stonemason as well, and I said, would it be beneficial to repair the just the pillar itself and then do the entirety of it, or would that impair the rest of it? 
and he said there shouldn't be a problem repairing if you have him or someone else repair the stone pillar and then come back and fill the cracks and clean up the rest because he was familiar with municipal budgeting <coughs> and potentially not having enough one year and um, requests and such. So that's what we're looking at. Um, so I don't I don't know if the commission would like to further push the, put it off to another meeting to discuss it if we want to go with the one we received. Um, I don't think it's unreasonable after talking with a few people, but I'm not a stone reason either, so I don't. Just so waiting for one more quote. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And we do have a meeting, not next week, but the seventh. Yes. That is next week. That is next week. I was going to say, it's coming up soon. It is next week. Um, so I, I, what I would think is why don't we just wait for the third quote we're meeting again next okay. week it's not going to push it out too far okay. and yep. see what we get and just try to make a call next week right. if we get those around to go back hey, did, you, did, they, did you investigate whether or not insurance will cover any of this costs we did yeah. um <laughs> the have some sort of to be general about it we have certain things covered on town property this was not covered because of its prox lack of proximity to any town buildings. Oh. Um, but that is also being looked into okay. for future yeah, potential it's problems. It's um, so basically, no. No, it does not cover it. No. Um, oh. But like I said, in <clears throat> terms of future problems, we're asking questions to, or I've asked your town secretary to ask those questions. Yeah, that would be something that we ought to be looking at too. Is just to be aware. You know, just to be aware of some people that might want to damage anything on the properties that we ought to pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that it's expensive, lesson. Huh? I mean, that has been deductible. That as well, but it didn't even. When did it register? Yeah, it didn't. It didn't even trigger anything. Excuse me. In terms of, it it had something to do with proximity to the town structures and the town structures are specifically listed I guess and the majority of them are the town buildings so like town hall, Coton, public safety, I forget which other. DPW. DPW. Yeah, they're probably on the of each other. Yeah. So what's it? I'm like, I'm like. Anyway. So. All right. So we'll just off until the second. Yeah. Thanks. Do you have an opening to 745? If you guys want to come up, please. Mm -hmm. this? No. The official? I can't believe I didn't finish. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> After you left, I didn't finish. She hears me. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. 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 I'm all right, the oh, Bolton okay. Conservation Commission will now hold a public hearing under the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and under the Bolton Wetland Bylaw, Chapter 233, to consider the request for determination submitted by Danielle Spicer regarding the proposed deck expansion located at 195 Wilder Road. The public meeting to begin right now. How are you? Patrick Burns. Oh, okay. so, so I think I mentioned, sorry, you weren't at the site visit, um, but the contractor is here tonight, Patrick, so if you have any specific questions with regard to the construction, um, otherwise the majority of you guys were able to see the site today. Yep. Um, it's There was the pictures of the existing deck that were there. Um, we removed that. It was literally a deck just to allow us to get out of the screen and porch and down. We would like to actually have a usable deck. Um, we'll be installing it with helical piles, which I think you guys saw, they just auger into the earth, they don't actually do any disturbance, and then building a deck above it. It's all over existing lawn area. Um, there's no addition of lawn. Um, it is an allowed accepted use from the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, and I think that was about it, unless you guys had specific questions. So then just for Lori, who wasn't there, we also, because something that comes up a lot is wildlife mm -hmm. passage and movement. And how the deck was originally situated, the lattice work was more than six inches above the ground to allow for that passage. Mm -hmm. um, so when we talked on site, if the commission 
would like, that would be something that could be conditioned as well to make sure that wildlife can still move through that area. So the lens work around the deck? Yeah, so we would, we would probably, could, so this is what was there before, so yeah. we would just put back exactly what was there before, just to kind of hide you underneath. You can see six inch off the ground. Right, you can see it. Yeah. originally the same. And more, we just match existing. Asking. So to make sure that things scuds and the raccoons have a place to go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we do have some um, <laughs> utilities under there, so yeah. I'd be a little, want to be a little careful there. So you have a screen in porch here. Yes, is that's going to be screened in. Or is it going to be open? That we're not touching that. Okay. We're not touching that at all. It's just the deck, the, just the deck portion. Yeah, but no, I just didn't know if you were going to continue. No, no, it's, it's just it's open. Sorry, it's just open. an open deck. No, we're not doing anything enclosed. Okay. So no drainage or anything like that. No, nope. no. Concerns. Uh, yeah. Sounds good. He's good. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> he just lost it. Everybody quite the same. Yeah. 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 The pilings or something new in terms of what I think the board has seen in yeah. this realm, I guess. I don't know outside of the commission if they've come across it, but I think that's definitely beneficial. For yeah, they're starting. I mean, things. like I mentioned, I'm a civil engineer. Yeah, we're starting <laughs> to do in areas where we have more um, sensitive areas. We're starting to see that more and more as a um, uh, as a way to do. To yeah. yeah, so you're minimizing your your impacts. So. Yeah, you using it, yeah. You don't dig a big hole. So it's like, well, exactly, we don't have any experience. Right. Yeah. So instead of the auger going in and coming out, it is the auger. Yeah, and it has, oh my god. The bit stays in the ground. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I'll, I'll so teach you know it's, yeah. it's a, it's a there, There's different sizes. Uh, those are about six feet underground. Six feet. So they go until they hit. About 15,000 pounds per post, so they're yeah. way stronger than the yeah. traditional pile. And it all depends on where, I mean, a this is... frost and all that stuff. Yeah, and they have a sleeve oh, yeah. on the outside of the galvanized pipe for frost to rise and fall, so the, the tile actually slides. Plus, Plus you also have down pressure on it. You have like a 5,000 down pressure on each post uh, for hurricanes. How are they, it just on the back of the bus? Uh, it was a small... Yeah. So a very small, a small, a small machine get. comes out, it's like a, a mini, uh, I don't know, a block cat, like a really small one, yeah. not like a really one small. you stand on the back of, and then basically the, the, the bit just comes up, screws down. As soon as it gets to a certain PSI, it's pre engineered, they know how many uh, pounds it can hold. They unbolt it, take it out, put it in. Because that thing came across, went in, and, and you didn't see any tracks no, in our nice. And there's nothing there. So. We, we strictly use these just because of that, how nice they are. It's a lot of advantages. You to cut it to height afterwards? Yeah, yeah, you can cut it to height. And then their posts are adjustable, so you have settling or sinking. Mm -hmm. You can actually adjust with the six inches. So over the years, are they reusable? I was trying to figure oh, yeah, out. Exactly. Oh yeah, so, yeah. so uh, uh, we actually sometimes we do like temporary supports. Yeah. Um, he can come and pull all the ones he put it down. Oh. So he can take he can take the screw right out of the ground or put put it back somewhere else. Um, but they actually lift foundations with them. They pin them through foundations for sinking, settling homes in swampy areas. And, well, they're pretty neat. Probably see a lot more. So they're just want to be Yeah. No. Did you see my back there? <laughs> I remember that back there. Um, I didn't have any questions. You said it's, it's all currently over existing lawn. It bumps it out about, about, about a yard and a half from the old the old footprint. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't it was basically a pre-existing use as far as I was concerned. Seeing it out there. I didn't have any additional issues. Anybody else did. Does the commission want to uh, leave a passage or leave it up to the homeowner for uh, preference? For what? So oh, passage? passage for I, the that was the, the one thing I, I still had put to, uh, so to put in. If possible, I know it was in the original orders and that's why they had put it there and generally we'll stick with those if we can to recreate. And yeah, the credits go around. <laughs> no, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> That's, I mean, that's it's just a question. It was, it was, it was, it was mainly just because we've got an air conditioner over there. I, no, I understand. Yeah, I understand. It was just a, sort of like. It was the enforcement. We'll, we'll match what was there before. 
Rebecca answered it. <laughs> uh, Rebecca, you know, um, I'm just writing down what I'm trying to say. Um, the commission can do whatever they want, but. <laughs> All right. Um, it's no other concerns. I'd like to make a motion that we close the public hearing for 195 for Wilder Road. Uh, do I hear a second on that? Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So both. Um, to make. Do you want to allow it? It's a negative five? Yes. Right. So they fall under an exemption. That's actually, I think, what, if you want to be brief about it, that's what the 310-R-1002, B, B, E, you want to get launch accessories such as thick. Yeah. <laughs> that's a short version. <laughs> I'd like to make a, a motion that we, uh, that the commission uh, issue a negative five determination uh, for the request for determination of applicability for 195 Wilder Road, in that the area described in the request is subject to protection under the Lee Act, uh, since the work described meets the requirements of the following exception, sorry, uh, that the area and or work described in the request is not subject to review approval. Uh, yeah, that's the in that the conversion of lawn to accessory to residential structures, uh, including material staging and stockpiles, located about 50 feet from the mean end lot. There was a way I was trying to say this easy, it's not going to happen, is it? And then conversion of lawn accessories to residential structures, such mm -hmm. as decks. Yeah, just kind and of because you said this, that covers you for the rest of the exemption. Sorry. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we have, uh, that the, the commission have a, find a negative five, issue a negative five determination for, for the request for determination of applicability under, is this code or is this? It's 310. Under 310MR10-02B2-E, um, that the, the conversion of lawn to uses Uses accessory the conversion of lawn to uses accessory to residential structures such as decks. Yeah. That was the hardest motion in the <laughs> second. Sorry. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. I don't want you to go through that. So, okay. <laughs> I was confusing myself. This is the wait. So do you need the only thing I need a signature from uh yeah. uh maybe the chair or for what? For we can, he can't pull a bill without approval from you guys. Yes. So either I can do that or Brian can do it. Thank you. We're just. Well, I was going to say, I, I, the only time I get this is before you were hired. Yeah. 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 Do we just want to go with what he's 
been doing, or do we want to include the spot mowing and things, which we budgeted for the entirety of it? Okay. Uh, it's not well, it's out there. Yeah, well, he, he also generally has a good idea. But he's yeah, trying well, to it's out it. there. So it looks like it's a good idea or need to. Where is there? Flower Springs. Flower Springs and conservation area. What's the other one? Buttercup, right? Yeah. Or is this just Bower? Um, yes. Well, Bower Springs and Buttercup, yes. Um, in Butternut, specifically in the stream channel, there's a lot of more mature woody vegetation there, and it's good to basically clear the waterway um, to allow water flow, not to have things get stuck in there and um, impair it. But he had basically stated that that needs to get done in the next two years, but it doesn't get, need to get done this year. So that's something that's necessary, but we could put off another year. Um, I may have left them in my office, though. Henderson's records, it's a property maintenance company. We've used them in the past. Um, we were kind of relooking at them. They do Bowers and Butternut and then um, any mowing. Those are two of the maybe three fields we have. I think, is there a field in Wilder down by the pond down by Wilder? Is there a field that has used to mow? It might be a field up above. Wow. Up above it, right. Yeah, that's not our. It's field. not ours. Somebody yeah. used to mow it, right. It, there's very few fields that we own. And, and um, Henderson Strikes a company we used to do before. He does a lot of conservation. Well, he does a lot of conservation work. He does a lot of historic properties, yes. conservation properties, as far as management. Uh, Did Carcass? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't have that exact number with me, but I can email it. Uh, but it's the same number. It's easier than us going out. It's easier than us going out. Yes, yeah. yes. yeah. Invasive yeah. species. Oh, yeah, it's way more. Yeah. 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 Uh, it was really over years and years ago. Yeah. It's pretty nice now. There's so much poison ivy out of Bower Springs. It's just. Hey, it's. Yeah, no. yeah my house still has to get out of work. Um, is this something we want to vote on? I mean, are we comfortable with Henderson Striker? We've had a chance yes. to look. Uh, we budgeted for this this year. We knew it was coming. He said we've used him in the past. Um, he did give us an extended plan this year. Uh, with some of the things that Rebecca had mentioned that he'd been talking about the past few years adding on. Uh, and we did budget for that as well because we knew he was coming with a proposal to come in and talk to the commission and put together a whole proposal. Um, I don't have any concerns currently with going with Henderson Striker this year. I don't know if anyone else does. So so it's, you're comfortable with them? I don't know if you have. Oh yeah, I am as far as individuals who have different files in my office that I've been through and it seems that not only with other conservation properties, historic properties like you said, but he's done good work on our town properties as well and I don't think I've seen an issue with him mm -hmm. as of yet um, and I don't know that we will see an issue, which is good. Uh, my, uh, my only outstanding question, and maybe that can be answered if I email you or if I, well, I'll email you the invoice that we received. I'm not sure if you got it. Um, but I mean, not the invoice we received, the proposed invoice for the work um, to see exactly what of the extras you would like to do, unless you just want to have it done in one shot. We can do that because we did budget for it, so we have the funding for it this year. Um, but that's so sort it's of something an we don't get funding for every year, though. We do. So how, and I can talk to you at another time about sort of the budget process, um, but basically we knew that the costs were going to increase. So when we went to the budget hearing, we specifically stated, you know, he gave us a very rough estimate, and I forget what the difference was from the actual versus the rough estimate, so that we could go into the budget hearing with a reasonable amount because we knew we used him 
we would like to continue to use him, um, but then also knowing we need to be a little bit more forward thinking in terms of what's on the property. So in terms of edge mowing, the stream, um, just making sure that it's it's being upkept so it's not in a couple of years the stream's going to be blocked up with the woody vegetation or you know you may be mowing the field but the field's getting smaller because the edge is starting to encroach because you haven't been mowing doing any edge mowing or any invasive removal so it was just considering that starting to sort of project where we're going to be in the next couple of years with mowing or land maintenance issues I, I, my opinion, do it all. <coughs> I mean, while you're there, you know, all these work it and you get its attention. Well, that is the <laughs> we have the money for it. We have the money for it. Yeah. Year. God knows what's going to happen next year. Anybody No problems. Not to. I just said do it. All right. So we should probably do a good old roll call vote. Everybody's favorite. Um, so the, the question is, should we contract Henderson Stryker for land capital maintenance based upon the proposal they had submitted? Um, and I would say a yay vote is yes, let's go with Henderson Stryker, and a nay vote is let's rethink this. Does that make sense? We'll start again. If, if you would start us off. I'm just going to abstain because I haven't seen it right now. Perfectly fine. Yeah. Yay. 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 Yay indeed. Cool. He put on a presentation for us a while back. It's pretty impressive what he does. Yeah, and he's more than he willing to come in job, again yeah. once the works. He's sensitive complete. to the land. You can Google him. Yeah, that's really <laughs> right. okay. yeah. I think. All right. What else good do we have tonight? I think that's it. Aside from, we received a letter. And I'm still, I haven't gotten a chance to really look into that, but I am planning to look into it to see if it's just advertisement or it goes beyond that. You received a letter just stating um, from Ocean River Institute, which I'm not familiar with that organization or company, um, stating that they would like to talk to the commission or representative from the commission about basically protecting the waterways, reducing invasives, algae, milfoil, all the usual suspects. So I don't know if that's a funding opportunity or if it's just individuals looking for business. I'm not sure, but I'm going to be looking into that. But that was the only outstanding mail, I think. And then we had Unfortunately, some vandalism on one of our conservation properties, which we are cleaning up, and it should be cleaned up by the end of the week. Who pays for that? Clean up. still fighting this out. volunteers and um, maybe, if you necessary. You volunteers all lined up and all that stuff to... It's already basically it's done. It's not... Uh, it's manageable. Yeah, good. Yep. Right. Yep. I'm just curious. Yeah. Uh, I did, I just want to bring this up. I did saw an article in the paper or somewhere, I don't know where it was, and I emailed it to you about um, the town of Tewksbury he just finished their open space project oh, yes. and everything else yeah. like that. And they said they got a, a grant from REI. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know whether or not that's something we should look into, see whether REI would want to give us some money to, you yes. know. I mean, we've got a lot of trails here that uh, use REI stuff on them, like shoes. Backpacks, bicycles, you name it. Mm -hmm. Whether or not it's something that we ought to. I'm more than more willing to, to move forward with that if I like them, but yeah. I don't know whether that's something that we should. I think any funding opportunities. All right, so I'll. Any I'll that we qualify yeah. for is not. So I'll get in touch with the right people at REI. Yes, the one thing is you can't. Under the Conservation Commission or being a town entity, you can't seek a donation if it's a grant that you are applying to or if it is someone approaches you to donate something, that's fine. But you can't ask them for donate, solicit, thank you, 
So we can't what? Solicit. Solicit. Ba basically, what, what you want to find out for them is who, how, how can we submit? How can we submit we for grant funding? How apply yeah. for grant funding? Okay, so I just don't want to answer. Yeah. Yeah. Give me ten thousand dollars. Yes. Can I have Which a grant? Which is the way I would normally ask them. Yeah, you can definitely ask them. No, I just like to clarify. That's a good thing. We have great opportunity for any ten grand to get that done. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. All right. So I should find out who. It's probably on their website too. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got a contact there. Okay. And so, I had a couple of other contacts in that sort of arena that might be interested in doing this kind of thing. So, when I saw that, I said, "Oh my God! Why didn't we think of that?" I mean, you think of these companies that have real interest and in conservation, yeah. and then they have money to yeah. to unsolicit. That's <laughs> yeah. yeah. And something to mention as well um, is. As you're sort of fact finding, you have to state that it would be a municipality, unless you were working with the trust to come forward uh, with some sort of donation, I, and then you would say it's a nonprofit. Yeah, but, well, I'm, yeah. I'm, I would identify it's myself just, as uh, working with the Conservation Commission. Yeah. Then yeah. that's it. You know, I mean, then if it does, if there is something that they would like to work with us on, and it requires moving it up the ladder, I'm going to put it here. I would just take the money. You would move it all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Go with it. You'd just take the money and run, right? Yeah, right? You are so yeah. fast, you wouldn't see me again. <laughs> Anything else good time? Yeah. 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 Yeah.